Psst. Do you know how to start art? Are you able to start your classes quickly with students quietly ready to learn? Do you wow evaluators with the opening of your art classes? Do you have former students come up to you at the mall and restaurants only to say hello and recite your art room rules that they learned years ago? No? Well, in this video, I'm gonna teach you how I start art. I'm gonna give you some time-saving tips and tricks to make your job easier. As the students come in, I have them stay in their line order. I guide them over to the spots on the carpet and we fill in the first row. Once the first row is filled, the line goes all the way across and sits down on the second row until we filled up the entire carpet. This avoids students climbing over other students or moving to sit around friends so that we can start quickly. I've trained my students that this is not a time to ask questions or for us to get involved into a lengthy conversation. The one question I absolutely do not answer at this time is, what are we making today? I've let them know that it's much more polite for us all to talk about that together as a class. When the students sit down, they are greeted by this slide here, reminding them to sit quietly. Next, when I'm ready to begin, I will lead the students in a clap. I say, one, two, one, two, three, don't hit clap. And each and every time I say, that clap means you turn your voice off and put your eyes on me. And then I wait. Now for my students, that clap means action. They're all saying that clap with me. They're also clapping along. They're also saying the part that's my script when I'm saying, turn your voice off and put your eyes on me because they know it so well. It's comfortable, predictable, and it feels safe. Next, I lead my students in a greeting. This works out great because I teach at a responsive classroom school. I do the same greeting as the most talented and wonderful Cassie Stevens. I say, hello, my most amazing artist, and my students say, hello, my most amazing art teacher. Then I guide them to this video here. Now, this is from Harry Wong Kindergarten. You can find it on YouTube. It's a quick 30 second video. The song goes, Chris Cross Apple Sauce, hands on lap, ginger snap back straight chocolate shake on my rear root beer finger on lips lips zipped this is a song i would sing along with to my kindergarten first and second grade students to get their bodies ready for learning then i guide them to this chart here they do not have to sit crisscross but rather they have a choice they can sit crisscross mountain or mermaid. And I simply just have to say, do a quick body check and choose which way you'd like to sit. This is what I would do with students in the upper grades and I would skip over that silly song. Admittedly, this is a little bit authoritative and weird. Um, having students sit this way though has been magical for me because each one of these choices has their bottoms on the ground. I'm no longer being interrupted in my teaching and having to tell students to please hold still or don't sit like that. I've got a common language that I can use and communicate clearly with them. I just say crisscross mountain or mermaid or I've printed out these signs. These are freebies from extra special teaching and I point to the signs to have students do that quick body check if needed. I have certain students where this just wouldn't work well. I've prearranged with them to have a certain spot into my room where they go, or they have a spot maybe where they stand in the back. These things are all done ahead of time in my class, so we're not stopping to have an argument of where someone's going to sit each and every day. If you take away only one tip from this video, let this be the one. Embedded in my slides, I put a photo of my timer, so I actually remember to set my timer. I use a time timer, as many teachers do, and what I will do is set it for my full hour, go back and look how many minutes we've already used for going through the greetings and the rules, and then also add in the time we will need to clean up. So my timer would reflect the time that we have to stop working and when our cleanup would begin. Get ready for some classroom management magic. This point in the class, I go over the rules with my students. That's right. This is not the first day of art. This is every single class students recite the rules. I put the rule up on the board and students follow along with hand motions and their voices. Rule number one, listen when the teacher is talking. 
Rule number two, follow directions quickly. Rule number three, work quietly. Rule number four, raise your hand. Rule number five, make smart choices. And rule number six, clean up after yourself. Now, this would get very dull after a few classes, so I do things to mix it up. Right where I'm seated, I have a list of different styles that I've come up with to do the rules. So sometimes we recite the rules underwater style. Sometimes we use a British accent. We mix it up each and every week to make it fun and fresh for students. Now, with my fifth and sixth grade students, I do not have them recite the rules each and every week. If they earn a golden paintbrush, which is the top behavior award for my classroom, they have shown me that they know my classroom rules and no longer have to do this step of class. However, whenever they receive a silver paintbrush or lose their paintbrush, the following week, we go back to reciting the rules. At this point in the class, if I hadn't already, I would stop and give the students some feedback about how they did with reciting the rules. Then I would give them a happy point. When I make a point, the students don't make a sound. They wait for it, wait for it. I point to them and for two seconds, they have a little party. They say, oh yeah. Now, had we done the rules or maybe come in noisy, something that we needed to stop and talk about, we would put up a frown. And same thing, I would make the mark, point to the students, and they would say, ah. Now, this is a concept, this happy, sad board, as well as the rules and motions that follow along with something called whole brain teaching. If this is not something that you've looked into, make sure you write that down and check it out. It works great with teaching art. For me, the points tie into a class incentive called the Golden Paintbrush Award. So at this point, I would flash the golden paintbrush up onto the board, remind students of what our goal was for the day. We would also then reset and show off our best listening. So I would say Mona, they say Lisa, Mona, Lisa, Mona, Lisa. And then I've got the same script I say each and every time. That means that your hands are still, your eyes are forward, and your lips are zipped. For me, this is extremely helpful because it gives a definition of what is good listening. Now, this one comes from Teachers Pay Teachers, a fabulous creator called Julie's Color Wheel. I've looked high and low for the best Mona that shows this listing, and this one is the one I definitely recommend. I love this because it does give that clear language for students that this is not something that we can do by looking to the side. It's not something we can do when we're touching other people. It needs to be that hand still, eyes forward, lip zip. There's no room to argue. Now, up until this point, the class has been reciting things, talking back to me. We've been doing the greeting. There's been a little bit of back and forth. Now is when I would take my sign, which was on the yellow zone when students arrived, and I would change it into the red zone. What the red zone means is the same as if you were driving, red means to stop. So in a red zone, students are taught that they need to raise their hand. I take the next few seconds to go over any reminders that I need to give to the entire school. So I put a reminder in here to remind students about a school-wide incentive that we have for a kindness program. The next reminder might be something about items that we're collecting, such as egg cartons, and specifically where to put those items. Any new classroom management things that I'm doing, such as using ketchup tags for artwork that's not finished, I would share in this way, in this time in my class, for the whole school. I go so far as even to do reminders periodically about things that we're getting rusty on. This way, everyone in our school is hearing those reminders, and these things are able to move like clockwork in the classroom. The classroom management is taken up a notch because of these reminders. Students are very clear on expectations and I am saved a lot of time and my job is made much easier. I hope that this video was helpful for you. Please join us if it was by subscribing and liking down below. This is Managing the Mess and we'll be back each and every Monday. I can promise you that I'm not a Pinterest worthy teacher, but I'm definitely trying my best. I'm trying to learn each and every week and bring some of that new ideas and new excitement to you.